Hi, I'm John Carey, and I'm here to talk about the proper diagnosis of superior canal dehiscence syndrome. Now, we've covered what is SCDS in some of our other videos. Again, it's an abnormal opening in the inner ear that causes vestibular, that is balance symptoms and hearing symptoms, like hearing your internal sounds, your pulse, your voice, your eyes moving, and vertigo from sound and pressure changes. If you have these specific symptoms, it's really important that you see the right kind of doctor and get the right testing done to make sure the diagnosis is correct. When this syndrome was discovered almost 20 years ago by my mentor, Dr. Lloyd Minor, it was really hard to get a diagnosis of superior canal dehiscence syndrome because it was so new and so few people understood it or did any testing for it. Now, it's fairly commonly understood in our community of ear surgeons. The problem is with the internet and the popularity of the diagnosis, it's actually easy to be misdiagnosed with superior canal dehiscence syndrome. So let's take a moment and talk about what really nails down the diagnosis. So first, you really should have a history of the hearing or balance symptoms of SCDS hearing your pulse, hearing your voice loudly in one ear, hearing your footsteps, that and, or you may just have the balance symptoms of seeing the world move when there's a particular loud sound to one ear or when you change pressure, coughing, straining, sneezing. If you have those symptoms, then you wanna see a specialist who really understands SCDS, generally a neurotologist an otolaryngologist who has special training in ear surgery. You should have a proper hearing test. You should have vestibular evoked myogenic potential testing, VEMP testing. And most importantly, you should be interviewed and examined with a careful exam of the function of the semicircular canals. In particular, you want an expert to look at the eye movements that could be caused by sound or pressure changes to see if they are characteristic of stimulation of the superior canal. The CAT scan is obviously very important to pick up a bone abnormality, but it should never be the case that the diagnosis is made based on the CAT scan alone. You see, something like 1% of the population has thin enough bone over the superior canal that it may look dehiscent on the CT scan, but that doesn't mean that the lining of the brain there is pliable enough to actually transmit the pressure to cause the syndrome. So you see it's really important not to just go on a CAT scan alone, but to see an expert, be properly examined, and get the proper testing to get the right diagnosis, and then get help.